Hey, y'all, this is Aaron Watson, and you're listening to Texas Toast Podcast. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Texas Toast Podcast with Miss Helen. And I am so honored and so excited to welcome everyone's friend, everyone's favorite, Aaron Watson. Hello, Aaron. How's it going? I'm good. How are you, Miss <clears throat> Helen? Doing good. I know you're staying busy. Thanks so much for taking this time. But let's t- talk about you. Of course, I'm a huge fan. Love all your music. Loved playing it on the radio. Been to your shows. And it just seems like, you know, there's an Aaron Watson song for every time in your life. Fun times, good times, bad times. And you've been doing this independently, like, what has it been, 24 years now? I think so, yeah, 24, 25-ish. Who's counting at this point? I know, it seems like it was just yesterday, though. But, like, such good music. And now, interestingly enough, I'm going to jump right into your new project called Cover Girl. And you've already got um, Seven Year Ache is out with Jenna Paulette, a duet. And so I love the story behind this from what I did when I researched, like your daughter was kind of an inspiration behind this project. Yeah, Jolie is 13 and she's real into music. And of course, she's like a Swifty, right? One of those crazy, <laughs> one of those crazy Swifties. But we, she and I just get to share our love for music and songwriting. Jolie's very into the songwriting side of things and she's, she sings incredible and she plays a little bit and she's just getting better every day. And I'm always trying to kind of just songwriting 101, like, Hey, Jolie, I know you like Dua Lipa, right? Well, let's also listen to Miss Amy Lou Harris, right? I know you like, uh, what, you know, whatever this other girl's name is, how about we listen to Patty Griffith? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like showing her some cool rock bands with girl singers, you know, like the Pretenders. And so Jolie and I got to talking about just a bunch of different female artists and songwriter, female songwriters that have inspired me that I've been like, wow. And then we kind of came up with this idea for this album called Cover Girl. And the idea behind the album is that I cover some of my favorite female songs. And then I duet those songs with some of my favorite independent female singer songwriters. Right. I just thought it would be a, a fun thing to do, a fun pro. It was just going to be a, a little fun project in between my next big project that I've been working Mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. But then it turned out so cool that we decided, Hey, let's, you know, let's, let's have some fun with this. Let's push these songs. Let's try to use this album as a tool to help gain some fans for some of these amazing female singers that I've got to do with. Okay, and I, I know that I did see where Kylie Fry was going to be one of the artists on, on one of the collaborations on Cover Girl. Oh, yeah. She's, she's awesome. She's awesome. And that girl can sing. And uh, she's authentic. And she's talented. And she's super cute. I mean, and just her personality super cute. I mean, we got to play a show with her. It was a weird show. I can't remember if it was some type of little, like, private party type thing at this hotel but she got up there and sound checked and it was just her and her guitar and if you can catch my attention with just you and your guitar no band no production then that's something because I was like wow she can play she can sing I mean she's a true talent and I think she's she's gonna be a mainstay in country music and she's just also just a wonderful person and that goes a long ways i know that there's so many of the the younger artists that are coming up that do you mentor a lot do you give a lot of advice to our younger texas country artists that are coming up um yeah if they ask me i mean a lot of these young bucks are typical young bucks where they already know it all i have funny conversations you know i got two teenage boys so i know a thing (laughs) or two about boys that already know it all 
And um, so, you know, with that being said, you know, I've had some conversations with some of these up and coming guys and, and, you know, and with some of them that are already having a lot of success and, you know, there's been a few of them that they already have this, this swagger about them. And I just give them a high five and I said, okay, well, good luck, buddy, which that's part right. of growth. Yes. Is yes. Living and learning. I mean, I, that's probably the same way. I'm probably the same way now. Who knows? Mm -mm. So when let's, let's, let's talk about when you first started in music, how did you get into music? And uh, I mean, what were your goals? Like, what was your vision for your future? Um, I just wanted to write songs. I loved Texas music. Mm -hmm. I loved the freedom of being an independent artist. Um, I've had a few labels, uh, you know, try to court me along the way. And the moment, you know, people let me know that they want to bring in all these outside songs for me to sing. Uh, you know, that that's where it always lost me because I'm I'm a songwriter first. And, you know, I've got buddies who have signed record deals and they're great songwriters. And then they put out a record in which they hardly wrote any of the album. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's just kind of, I don't know. I don't want to be, I enjoy, like, for instance, I enjoy doing this cover album, but not like I enjoy recording my own songs. Those are my babies. Right. That's my heart and my soul. So I don't know. I'm always going to be partial to my own, my own art, my own creation. So I don't know that I had goals. I think I just wanted to write songs. I wanted to record music. I wanted to play shows, you know, and I, I don't know. I honestly can say I feel like I've been very thankful every step of the way, you know. I mean, I can remember playing some some of these little 200, 300 capacity little honky tonks and bars and them being sold out. And I was like, oh, my word, you know, we just sold this place out. I mean, we play this place called Blaine's in San Angelo. And I don't know, that place probably holds a hundred and we'd sell it out. And I feel like I was George Strait afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, I'm getting to do what I love. So it all seems like it's the uh, cherry on top for me. Yes. Yes. Well, you laid, you laid a good foundation and, but you're just so authentic and your music is too. And speaking of that, I am still that crazy, silly girl, no matter when out of style comes on, it's like, I'm sorry, I can't sing, but y'all are going to have to listen to me. But I, one of my favorite moments ever, the Texas country music awards uh, a couple of years ago, when you closed without a style and everybody came out and sang, Oh my gosh, that was like the ultimate for me. Yeah. I, I remember going, what is happening? <laughs> but that was, that was really fun. That that's, that was a very special song for me. I, I, I I didn't think it was that special of a song, uh, to be honest with you. I, I wrote it and I, I just want, I needed another upbeat song for the album. And I mean, it, just, it was so neat. Like that, that song was on the country billboard chart for like 50 weeks. I think mm -hmm. it set the record for the longest, slowest climb to the top 10. And we did all that independently, which I think there's only been two or three songs in the last 60 years that have charted top 10 without a label. So that was a huge achievement that I'm very proud of. And, um, and, and so when I first got started, I didn't have a lot of like goals as far as like, I want to have number one hits. I want to have this. Right. I, I wasn't like that. My heroes are Robert Earl King, and Jerry Jeff Walker and Gary P. Nunn. And mm -hmm. I was we were chasing that Texas band Cooter Gras around all the time. Oh my gosh. They were one of my favorites. They were oh, one of my favorites too. And, yes. and, and I'm from Amarillo and Matt and those boys were from Amarillo. So for me, 500 people at Green Hall, that was as big as it got. That was, that was the pinnacle. Yes. You know, yes. And, and where I'm sure there's a lot of Nashville artists that are like, 
500 people in some small little wooden building. But to oh, us, you only knew. To us, yes. it's everything. It's everything. But now, all these years later, um, I definitely have bigger goals. And it's like I'm I'm writing a country album right now, and it's like here I am. You know, by the time it comes out, I'll have been doing this for 25 years, and it's wow. going to be my best album ever. It's awesome. gonna be it's gonna be very raw and real, and it's like however I was feeling that day I wrote that song, whether it's a you know a down in the dumps heartache song or whether it's you know on cloud nine kind of song that's that's what you're gonna get you know it's just gonna be it's gonna be the best project we've ever recorded and and that's the thing is that like it's i it's crazy to say that i've been doing this for that long because i don't i don't feel like it but i guess time flies when you're having fun yeah, time flies when you're having fun and putting out such good music and putting on such good shows. I love coming to your shows. You're so good. Don't you just love your fans? Oh, I do. I think there was just like three or four years in the beginning where I got used to playing to nobody. And it was night after night after night of playing to nobody. And that that is kind of hard to do. You know, in the beginning we would get to open up shows for some bigger artists and the place would be packed and it was just the the highest of highs. Right. And then the next night you're playing some hole in the wall to nobody. And that was, I remember going, Oh man, you know? Um, so I just think it, that once the fans started showing up, like I literally kind of needed to just hug them all after the show. It's just like, after the show, I'm like, hey, y'all, I'll be back here with the merchandise after the show. If you buy something, I can sign it. Uh, at least stop by and let me, you know, give you a high five or a hug. So I do. I do appreciate the fans. That's those are my customers. Mm -hmm. I love that story. And in, in so many times, so many stories like that. Where I, you know, all of y'all that are so successful now, so many of you Texas artists that played those shows where like there was maybe five people or 10 people, but you grinded through it and now you're filling up those seats everywhere. And I think that's good for the young artists to hear because some of them don't get that. I've been in a situation working a stage where it's like, well, can we wait another 20 minutes for more people? No, no, you go do, you go do your thing. That's, you know, that's yeah. just part of the process, right? Yep. It really is. It's part of the deal. I mean, it's kind of like, I think that there's a lot of, uh, I don't know. I think it's a, a very, a, probably more competitive now than it's ever been with social media. I also think, you know, we're all, we're all guilty of this, but I think the younger generation, you know, they want it and they want it now. Mm -hmm. And I've had younger artists say, how long did it take you before you could start doing this? And I was like, I don't know, 10 years, 1500 shows. And they're like, oh, they're, they're appalled by the idea of having to grind it out. And I was like, well, just so you know, it took Willie till he was 45 to really start having that national success. I mean, he was having moments along the way and he was just doing what he does. And that's mm -hmm. making music and being Willie. Yeah. So, well, and, okay. This is, I go weird like this. I love to fish. I mean, it's like everybody wants to know how to catch that 30 inch trout. It was not just yeah. going to come jump out of the water. You got to have technique. You got to have patience. You got to be on the water. You got to scout. You got to know where they are. So there, yeah. you know, in all things in life, it's not happening right now. It's always in God's time. Number one, and everything yeah. happens for a reason. Speaking of fishing, but you also, you played baseball in college, right? Yeah, I probably shagged more fly balls and rode the bench more than playing, but <laughs> no, I did. I got to go to New Mexico Junior College and play a little bit, which was great. And then I went to ACU, and uh, I hurt myself in off season right off the bat, and that's kind of what that's what ended my career was an injury, and that's what opened the door for you know my music. So. Awesome. One door closes, another one opens. Mm -hmm. You just got to roll with the punches. That's exactly right. 
And another thing is that I think is interesting and well-deserved is you were inducted into the Texas Cowboy Hall of Fame in 2020 at Billy Bob's. How yeah. cool is that? That was really cool. I mean, that was... That was a special, special moment. You know, Red Steagall is one of my heroes. Mm -hmm. So having Red there and having my family there, I still don't feel like I deserved such a thing. But it was very, it was such, it, it was such an honor. It was such an honor, and um, that was a wonderful thing to happen. You know, it really. And then you know, a couple of months later, the the pandemic hit and. <laughs> things got crazy for a while but that was one of those things that that was just like that was a nice high that got me through a bunch of lows mm -hmm. so any special plans for the summer and what's it like at the watson house with the whole family and the kids <laughs> well there's I see that three, face <laughs> there's three teenagers there yeah and their mom is there three teenagers and their mom is there it, it's I probably should just not say anything else. That's all you um, have to say. <laughs> but it's it's fun and it's always adventurous. I booked a little vacation for us last second a couple of weeks ago, and we were on a beach in Mexico, a secluded beach, and we we had a ton of fun. Um, I got into a little fight with the baby jellyfish. Oh no! That was not the most fun I've ever had. But you know we're touring here out on out on um out on the road. My oldest boy Jake's playing with me. You know we're gonna take a little vacation in between some shows up in Colorado, and the babies just grow too fast. Certainly, and um for sure. Mm -hmm. I wish it would slow down, but that's not life. <laughs> right. So. Well, I know you're a busy man. I'm gonna let you get back to it, and I can't thank you enough. <clears throat> excuse me for coming on the podcast and taking time to visit. Like I said, I'm a huge fan. Love your music, like crazy weird. Thank love you. your music. <laughs> so well, thanks. Thanks for having me. And thanks for giving me the opportunity to share my story and, and promote my album mm -hmm. cover girl. And I know there's, we talked about Jenna songs out there. Jenna's playing a show with me tonight. Um, and then I also released a song with Jolie, my little girl, um, which is never grow up, right. which is a, a Taylor Swift song that she she forced me to sing, mm -hmm. which I adore that song. It is the sweetest <laughs> lyrics. Um, but you can uh, everyone can hear those right now, and then the rest of the songs will be coming out, you know, over the next several months. But um, I just want to say thanks to like you know you and all your listeners for supporting. Uh, not just me, but all Texas artists. It's a, yes. it's a blessing we're, to be a part of this industry. Yes. We're all family. It's just like family, literally. Like I love when we all get together at the awards and all the hugs and high fives and sharing stories and catching up and just, just getting to hang out. It's just always, it's always so uplifting once we leave there and yeah. you know, get back home and you just have those bonds always. So, all always. right, well, Aaron Watson, one last question. If you were a cocktail, what would you be? Oh, I would be a, hmm. I'd like to be a pina colada. Sounds good. Perfect summertime drink. Thank you again so much, Aaron Watson. Yeah. You're the best. Thank you.